Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art jamming channel. Today I'm doing a piece that's been inspired by um, Inky Quill uh, over on Patreon. And it's using the Jane Davenport face stencils. Now this is a piece that I have done previously on my art journal, uh, uh, on my YouTube channel, so please go and check that out. But the reason I wanted to do it in this 6x6 journal was I wanted to see how what proportion of faces would work in this journal. And it was a page I particularly loved doing. It's why um, Inky Quill's original piece really inspired me. So I wanted to try it out in this journal. So I started off with some gesso and now I've just put over a really light coat of really watery blue and turquoise colours from the Dina Wakeley range. So I think that was sky, turquoise and maybe a little bit of ocean. The next thing I'm doing is creating my collage papers for this page. And I'm using the new Darkroom Door word stencils and just some ruby paint. This doing stencils onto deli paper or collage paper is a fantastic tool to have in your collage arsenal because um, when you gel media them down onto a page they go translucent and particularly if you're using acrylic paint you just get this really awesome solid block of colour that you can put over the top of anything um, and all the scraps that I've used from this making this paper have found their way into other collage collages I've created and I really love these papers so it's certainly something I'll be doing a lot more of. I love words and I love text in my artwork so this is a really great way to incorporate it without being really in your face and the fact that you can sort of tear it up and you just get the impression of the words I really like. So once I've cleaned down my space that I'm working on I go back to my main journal. So to do this page I need to make sure my first layer is dry and again working with acrylics really important that you make sure your layers are dry as you're working. So this is the Jane Davenport face stencil and I'm just using a light coloured ink. This is the fossilised amber of the archival inks and the reason I'm using a light ink is I just, I'm going to be painting over this. I don't want it to be in your face black because I know I'm going to be adding some paints over the top of it. I just want to get the proportion of the face on my page. Now I'm going in and putting the hair and using a range of pink paint, so magenta, fuchsia and some of the neon pink from the Amsterdam range, which again I loved using in this because it really made the colours pop. And I'm just using a credit card to scrape it across the page. Again, I'm going to add more to this afterwards, but I'm just sort of wanting an impression of where the hair is going to go. So everything's a little bit free and easy. I'm also going back in and adding a little bit of white just to tone down the colours and mix them in a little bit together um, and I can go back and sort of ramp up the colours as I need um, when I'm finished. So once I've dried that layer you can see I'm going back in and just scraping over the paint where I want it probably in a little bit more of a controlled manner now that I've sort of know where I'm going with the page. Uh, again, I pull out that neon pink because I just can't go past it. I absolutely love that colour. When I finish doing that, I tear up the collage papers that I've made into smaller pieces and start gluing them down on my page. So just using gel medium to do that, gluing it down on the bottom and then going over the top just to make sure it's really incorporated onto the page. It's also really important if you're gluing across the spine, like that piece there, that everything's glued down. It's not going to come loose. Um, and it's nice and sort of fitted into that spine area so it will bend easily with the page. Everything's kind of all mixed up in higgledy-piggledy, but um, again, you get that impression of those words and that flow going from her hair. So you can keep adding until you're, you're happy with how much you've got. And then again, make sure it's heat set. Um, when you're ready. I don't think I bothered doing that because there was so little matte medium to glue it down and the collage tissue is so fine that it really doesn't bother it too much. Now the acrylics I'm using to paint the face are the Jane Davenport portrait set with the acrylics um, matched for um, faces um, and I'm just sort of painting over the whole face so it looks very alien-esque. So I'm starting off with a base coat which is the lightest colour and then I'll go in with the darker colours and add some highlights. I'm also going to go in with some colour pencil and paint pens and a few other bits and pieces afterwards to add in some detail. So 
um, it is a process of layering everything up. Once I finish doing that, you can see I've got some darker paints out now and I'm starting to sort of put in where the nose should be, um, where the mouth should be, around the jawline, um, a little bit around the ears and down on the neck where the shadow should be. So there are lots and lots of YouTube clips out there about portrait painting and where the shadows can should go. I'm certainly not an expert. I tend to have the darker bits um, on the bottom left hand side of things um, so around sort of that chin line neckline also around the hair is a little bit darker just down the nose and there's a little bit of highlight on the nose too um, but you can play around with it until you're happy the good thing about acrylic paints um, are if you don't heat set them you can you've got a bit of an opportunity to rub them off if you really don't like them so I just went in with the black um, ink and the face stencil again just to put in the eyes, the nose and the mouth and now I'm using a Stabilo All Pencil to colour in the rest. You can see that Stabilo All Pencil isn't a thicker line around the face which I really liked and I'm also drawing in where the hair is going to be. Now I use the Stabilo Pencil for two reasons. One, I can wet it and get that watercolour effect from it Two, if you really, really don't like it, you can use a lot of water or a wet wipe and wipe it off completely. So it's very forgiving, um, more so than if I tried to do that with a permanent mark and I really didn't like it. So you can also use it as your shadowing tool a little bit. Now I'm going in with the Posca paint pen with the red, just to echo the red that's in her hair to put onto her lips. And drawing in the irises with the blue pen and then I'll go with the black to put in the pupils. Just make sure when you do the pupils that you add in a little spot of white, which is the catch light, because um, that makes eyes come alive. And you can see the difference with and without the catch lights in people's eyes. They sort of look dead and starey otherwise. I'm also using a Posca paint pen in pink just to colour in the rest of the hair. You can see it's a little bit grungy looking, and that's because some of the... Um, Stabilo All Pencil has sort of mixed in with the paint, but I kind of like that because again that gives you sort of instant shadowing without having to do very much. So I've got the hair sort of swooping down behind her neck and then going across like it's a really strong breeze. To be honest, I'm not an expert with hair at all um, and that was borrowed from Inky Quill's original design. But I really like how it flows. I don't think if it's, uh, I think it might be defying gravity somewhat, but um, it works, so to speak. So now I'm just going in with some more paint just to try and sort of balance it up a little bit. I'm putting in some blush onto her cheeks and I just use my finger with some um, pink paint to do that. And now I'm going in and trying to draw some eyelashes. <laughs> Um, not very successfully, but I don't draw them on myself very su successfully either, so I suppose that's why. Um, those people who are good at doing winged eye lines will probably be very good at doing this process. I'm um, using the License to Quill Pen again from Jane Davenport. You can order that through her site. It's an incredibly black pen and it's um, waterproof, so once you've finished using it, that's, it doesn't smudge and smear. However, it does take a little bit to dry, so don't try and smudge it um, as, you, as it's drying or put your finger through it because you can move it and smudge it. Just I've learnt from experience with that one. So here's putting in the catch lights and some highlights using the white paint pen. And I've drawn in some lines for the hair. Now one thing I've found when I've been doing hair is um, sometimes by putting in some more lines in different colours, it sort of just adds to it. I wasn't particularly happy with the, the hairline I drew for up the top, but I just went with it. Um, I found while this face fitted into this journal, it was okay. It was probably a little bit large um, and it worked better in a larger journal. So that was one of the reasons why I was experimenting. Um, drawing it in this journal just to see how it goes and what the proportions were like. One thing that really brought this to life was putting that gold through her hair and having that touch of gold with the pink and turquoise I think looks beautiful. 
I'm also using some of the Jane Davenport Mermaid markers to add some more highlights to the page. Um, it's almost like a watercolour ink, uh, but it's probably a little bit more pigmented, and you can see me sort of putting it on and then dabbing it off. It does soak into the paint itself and dulls down a little bit, but it's a really easy way to get some beautiful highlights and shimmers, um, highlights and shadows, sorry, from your painting as you go. So one of the final things I did on this page was to put in a quote, uh, some journaling, sorry, about um, this page and why I did it and what I liked about it. Again, in the gold pen because I really loved that combination of the gold, the turquoise and the pink. And over the top I used a Tim Holtz um, sticker, which, uh, sorry, chipboard, which said limited edition. And again, like some of the other pages I've done, that's on quite a thick piece of chipboard and I've just peeled it off to make it a little bit thinner. So this is the final close-up of the page. I really loved it. It's still an image that I really love um, and it worked in this journal. So um, thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a go at doing something similar and until next time, bye for now.